Howdy all, it's Miss Kosh. I wanted to do a short video on the sum and difference identities. Well, I'm not sure how short it'll be, to be honest with you. Um, there is a point where all of this will be necessary for HL and pre-cal, um, but just a tiny bit of it is necessary for SL. So SL, you're welcome to watch the whole video if you want an extension, if you want to learn more than I'm required to teach you. Um, but pre-cal and HL, you definitely want to hang with me the whole time. Okay, so the first thing that I have here is um, is this statement, sometimes always are never true. And that is that sine of A plus B is equal to sine of A plus sine of B. So here are a few different terms, different values that I wanted to think about. Keep in mind, the unit circle never goes away. And so sine is my y value. Sine of 0 would be 0. Um, 30 degrees is somewhere over here. That y value is 1 half. This should be old hat to you. You should be really good at this. Um, 60 degrees, that sine value is root 3 over 2. And then sine of 90 is equal to 1. Okay, so is this sometimes always or never true? Well, one of our examples could be, would you agree that... Um, 0 plus 90, I guess I should put a little degree symbol, this would be equal to sine of 90, right? 0 plus 90 is 90. And we're saying, is it true that that's equal to sine of um, sine of 0 right here plus sine of 90 right here? Well, sine of 90 is 1, and so 0 plus 1 is 1. So yes, that gives us a true statement, but check out what happens when we look, when we look at the next one. Um, so when I say... Um, is this true, sine of 30 degrees plus sine of 60 degrees, does this equal, here's our question mark, equal sine of 90? Sorry, I'm way off to the side. Um, what we have, sine of 30, we just wrote down to be 1 half. Sine of 60, we just wrote down to be root 3 over 2, and we said that sine of 90 was equal to 1. Well, that that's not equal, okay? Um, we would... No, it's not equal. So this this case right here, is it sometimes always or never true? I'm going to say it's sometimes, but maybe what we really should have said is that it's rarely true. Okay, um, so what we need is we need these different identities that um, I'm not going to generate where they come from. You could Google it if you're curious. Um, but basically, what we have is we have sine of u plus v would be equal to, well, notice, let me point this out to you. I have a plus or minus here and a plus or minus here. What happens is that the plus corresponds with the plus right here. But in the other two equations, the plus corresponds with the minus here. And then the minus corresponds with the plus. So this is a minus plus. I'm not sure if you've seen that before. But um, this allows us to write instead of Three, just Well, it allows us to write six identities in the space of three, okay? So we can kind of condense all of these down. So um, so these are the different sum and difference identities. Um, what I, you don't have to have these memorized for anybody, um, but the more you practice and the more that you write them down as you go, the more you will have them memorized. So what I think of is um, the sine of u plus v, is equal to sine, sine, cosine, cosine, sine, is how I remember that. And then I do u, v, u, v, and then it's the same S-I-G-N, okay? So it's the same operation here. And then cosine, what I remember is it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, with the opposite S-I-G-N. So if it had been a plus, it's now a minus. And then tangent, it's tangent of u. It's the same on the top and the opposite on the bottom. So tangent of u plus tangent of v over 1 minus tangent of u, tangent of v. So, um... Yes, those are important, and we're going to start using those. At this point, um, these are not part of the SL curriculum, but I wanted you to watch up to this point because I'm going to introduce something that is part of the SL curriculum using these identities right here. So SL, if, you're, if, you're, if that's all you can handle, you can log off now. Um, everybody else, hang with me. All right, so here we go. The first one, find the exact value of sine of 5 pi over 12 two different ways. So what we can do with this one is we can come up with ways to add things that we know from the unit circle to get 5 pi over 12, okay? So um, if I have 5 pi over 12, I know I can add or subtract, actually. I could say that this is 3 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12. Okay, and the reason that I would pick those is because this one reduces to pi over 4, and this one reduces to pi over 6, and those are things that I know from the unit circle. So what I can do is I can say, okay, well, sine of 
5 pi over 12, I could use the parentheses or not, but is equal to sine of pi over 4 plus pi over 6. Okay, that allows me to break this down. And now that I've got it as the sum of these different things, I can do sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And so I have sine of pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 6 plus, it's, the sine has the same S-I-G-N, um, plus cosine of pi over 4 times sine of pi over 6. So notice I'm taking, I'm matching, I'm using this formula right here and plugging in the values that I care about. The u was pi over 4, so it's sine of pi over 4, cosine of pi over 4 goes here, and then it's um, cosine of pi over 6 and sine of pi over 6 right there. Okay, so now we're back to our unit circle, and it never goes away. So hopefully you remember that sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and that cosine of pi over 6, that meant we went farther out, and then cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2, and sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Um, we will, can clean this up and say that this is root 6 over 4 plus root 2 over 4. I'm happy if you leave it here, or you could give it all the same denominator. Either of those answers is great. Okay, another, so, but they said do it two different ways. Okay, um, I said to do it two different ways because I was making a point, but whatever. Um, another option, now, I could think of this as, um, I could think of this as 4 pi over 12 plus pi over 12. And then this becomes, um, oop, I needed a 3, I just didn't need it in the numerator. This becomes pi over 3 plus pi over 12, which is great, but not very helpful because pi over 12 is not on the unit circle. So we don't want to do that. Okay, so all of that is gone. Um, what we want to do is we want to come up with another way to get to... Uh, 5 pi over 12 using things from our unit circle. So what I might do is I might say, okay, well, what about 9 pi over 12? What would I need to subtract? I would need to subtract 4 pi over 12 to get to 5 pi over 12. Okay, well, then I can reduce both of these. This is 3 pi over 4, which is on my unit circle, and this becomes pi over 3, which is on my unit circle. Okay, so this is these two are not the only ways that you could work this problem, but let's see what happens when we do. We can say a sine of 5 pi over 12 is equal to sine of 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3, which is equal to sine cosine, the same S-I-G-N, minus cosine sine. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, let's try that again. Um, sine of 3 pi over 4, that is in, where is that one? So all of this you have to know. But sine of 3, so 3 pi over 4 is here. Pi over 3 is here. So um, sine of 3 pi over 4, it's positive root 2 over 2. Cosine of um, pi over 3, that's 1 half. Minus, now the cosine value here is negative. Negative root 2 over 2, because that's in quadrant 2. Cosine is negative in quadrant 2. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And notice we get root 2 over 4 plus, because there's a negative times a negative, root 6 over 4. And hopefully we get the exact same thing that we got just a second ago. Okay, so far so good. Let's move on. I went to right and green. Okay, find cosine of b minus a when sine is given and tangent is given. Oh, goodness. Okay, here's how I would start this problem. I would, I would put, I would draw a, and, and notice a is going to go from pi over 2. It's somewhere between pi over 2 and pi. So that means that angle a is in the second quadrant. They might also say, I've seen problems, especially in IB, where they say angle a is obtuse. Okay, see how if angle A goes from here to here, that is an obtuse angle. If they had said that it's acute, notice an acute angle would have to be in quadrant 1. Now, they don't have a name for quadrants 3 and quadrant 4, but I have definitely seen that where instead of giving this sort of notation, they'll say angle A is obtuse. Okay, so they're telling us sine of that is 8 over 17. That's um, sine is... Uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so this was an 8, 15, 17 triangle, but notice that this is going in the negative direction. So now sometimes what I find helpful is to say, okay, sine of A was equal to, looking at my, my picture, 
Um, yeah, I already wrote that down, but anyway. Then this is negative 15 over 17, and it might be helpful for me to know that tangent of A is equal to, well, it's a negative 8 fifteenths. Put the negative at the top or the bottom. I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it if I put it at the bottom. Um, okay, then they said the tangent of B is equal to negative 3 over 4, and now we're in quadrant, well, 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. We're now in quadrant 4. Okay, notice on these, I'm not really concerned if I'm drawing them to scale, but I want to make sure that I'm in the correct quadrant. Um, so tangent is opposite or over adjacent. But notice the negative is going to be the 3. Oh, okay, because that's the, it's going down. It's, that's negative. Ah, this is what I was reacting to a second ago. This is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So 3, 4, always keep the hypotenuse positive and everything will work out beautifully. And this, okay, so here's sine of B would be equal to negative 3 fifths. Cosine of B would be equal to a positive 4 fifths. And tangent of B, I'm writing it down a second time, one, so that I have it in the same, like, I have all of this together and all of this together as I need it. Um, it's a little redundant, my bad. Um, but also to make sure that it really, like, I'm checking my work here. This is negative 3 over 4, and sure enough, tangent of B is negative 3 over 4. Okay, that lets me know that I'm on the right path. So now I have all of that, and I haven't even addressed the problem at hand. So they're telling me to find a cosine of B minus A. Well, this is cosine, cosine, and then the opposite S-I-G-N, plus sine, sine. Okay, so now we can say cosine of B, well, we, we wrote that down. That came from over here, cosine of B. So we're going to get numbers in all of these places. Okay, and all of the numbers that we care about came from here. Okay, um, the biggest mistake that I see is that somebody would then write down, they would say cosine of four-fifths. No, you've already taken the cosine of B, and it is equal to four-fifths. So don't do that, because that would be wrong. Delete, it's gone. Okay, so, my bad. Um, cosine of B is equal to four-fifths. Cosine of A is equal to negative 15 over 17. Okay, I have fun numbers to work with. Okay, whatever. Sine of B is negative 3 fifths. And sine of A is 8 over 17. On these type of problems, we often don't want to get a common, or like reduce things, because we'll need a common denominator. There's nothing to reduce here anyway. Um, what is this? Negative 60 over, um, what is that, 85? How's my, okay, 50 times plus 35 more is, yes, 85. My bad. Minus 24 over also 85. So this final thing becomes a negative 84 over 85, and that's the cosine value. Um, I didn't need tangent here, but if they had asked me to find tangent, then I would have. Okay, so then we could do, um, I tried to minimize this and give you as few example problems as, as I could just to be to kind of streamline the video that keeps going. Okay. Um, next one, we have find tangent of that. Okay, so they're asking us to find tangent, and they've given us, they've told us that the sine value, so we're going to draw it just like we did on the previous example. Um, we're now in quadrant three. And so they said sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, I did this one intentionally where it's not something on the unit circle. Okay, so I, I did that on purpose. Negative 6 squared plus b squared is equal to 7 squared. So 36, oh, b squared is going to be equal to 49 minus 36. What is that? 13. And so b is equal to root 13. But technically, we want the negative because we have gone in the negative direction. Okay, so looking at this, we had, this is x, so sine of x was equal to, yeah, we already wrote this down, that's my birthday, 617, I don't know where I wrote this, okay, probably that's why, cosine of x is equal to negative root 13 over 7, and tangent of x is equal to, now it's going to be positive, 6 over root 13, and I would say don't rationalize these, there's not much gain to be gained by rationalizing them, um, okay, so tangent Oh, this is a gross problem, of x plus 3 pi over 4 
is equal to tangent of x plus tangent of 3 pi over 4 all over 1 minus tangent of x times tangent of 3 pi over 4. Okay, so the good news is that I picked 3 pi over 4 nicely. That's right here, and that has a tangent value. The slope of that is negative 1. So that's nice. Um, hang on, I'm going to... I'm going to come down here. So I have this 6 over root 13 minus 1 divided by 1 minus 6 over root 13 times a negative 1. Ugh. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do at this point, I don't want fractions in a fraction. So let's multiply everything by root 13 over root 13. And this gives me 6 minus root 13 over root 13 plus 6. Um, okay, maybe we shouldn't, we should rationalize the denominator. I don't know that I care a whole lot. Your calculator would rationalize the denominator and keep going. Um, but give me a decimal approximation for that if you need to. Uh, anyway, I don't think it's worth my time to rationalize the denominator. Last example, here we go. On this one, they're saying condense this. I see sine, sine, cosine, cosine, but it's the minus is here. Notice that this is a negative cosine. I can reorder this. And then, well, that's almost one of my, one of my um, formulas. Okay, notice that looks a whole lot like this one right here. So what I can do is I can factor out the negative And now this is the angle sum for cosine. So this is going to be equal to a negative cosine of, well, it's what happens when we add these things. Because it's the, we have the opposite SIGN with cosine. And so this would be equal to a negative cosine of 4x. And that's how they wanted us to condense that. Okay, good luck. I hope that was helpful. Practice. Let me know if you have questions.